Boxing fans ringside, get ready for a cruiserweight contest. This one scheduled for four three minute rounds of boxing. Timekeeper on the bell is Phil Morris from Liverpool. Our scoring referee upon the sound of the bell is star referee Steve Gray from Fleetwood. On my left, boxing out of the blue corner, scaling at 13 stone, nine pounds, eight ounces. Six career victories, including four finishing inside the scheduled distance. Wearing the black shorts trim with white this evening, a boxing out of Klapida, Lithuania. Introducing Imantas, the giant Davidadis. And across the ring, boxing out of the red corner. On the scales officially, at 14 stone, one pound, 10 ounces. Wearing the black shorts trim with silver. Boxing out of Warrington, Cheshire. And this evening, in the ring, making his professional boxing debut, it's Mike McKay. <laughs> Referee Steve Gray will now give his final instructions to both boxers. A cruiserweight contest, this one scheduled for four three minute rounds. Four three minute rounds and the debutant Mike Mackay there looking up at looking up at Imatas Davideiras. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, can be a dangerous puncher. Imatas, uh, when he wins, he generally wins by knockout. Six wins, so four of them out, coming out, early. Out, and someone who, John Pegg, you know all too well, can end things by knockout. Yeah, I brought him over for a show in Sheffield a couple of years back, and he boxed the heavyweight Dave Howe and, and knocked him out the second round, and it was quite a concussive knockout as well. So he, he does wing the right hand in quite wide and sends it in. Well, really, if, if, if he's sending in wide shots, it's... Uh, Typical instructions for a debutant, isn't it? Keep it nice and tight, nothing silly, nice straight punches. Well, Mike McKay's a, got a good level as an amateur, GB, yeah. won novices, ABA final, so he should keep it nice and tight, work the guy's body. He, I don't think he'll get caught with any silly shots, but first fight, anything can happen. Could get a bit excited. Trains out of a ride or gym. Yeah, Rob Butler in the corner yeah, there. Rob's Rob a great coach. Give uh, Joel Wood a, a little mention here, you know, for Rydal Psycho, who's making a, a little bit of a name for himself. Fought in a couple of big bills. He's had to <clears throat> turn it in early, a couple of uh, medical issues. Hope Joel sorts himself out with something soon. Looks quite calm, Mike, doesn't he, John? Yeah, well, when you've got that amateur pedigree, I had a feeling come in and he'd work it over nicely. And he's not going to rush against a tall guy who's who's not people out. He's just going to take his time, bring his hands down and do his job. Davidas, to be fair, has kind of dropped down a couple of levels in the yeah. last few years. He's lost to some guys he perhaps shouldn't have lost. And I don't know if he's lost a bit of ambition or, but he's not quite the, oh, there you go. There's that right hand. The wide right hand that I was talking about. Quite unorthodox, isn't he, for such a big rangy guy? You know, he doesn't look to utilize that jab too much. Doesn't look to settle in behind it. He's, Punches are quite wide. Yeah. Welcome to the pros there for Mike Mackay. Yeah. He soaked it up well enough though. We were just talking a couple of earlier fights, John Mc Cruiserweight division, it's come from being unfashionable and not popular over the years. We've been saying it's the best division for exciting fights. And at the moment, we've got a whole host of talent coming through, haven't we? Yeah, it's going to be when they all get to the level where they're fighting each other, it's going to get really exciting. At the moment, there's not many guys in Britain who box away from home in the cruiserweight division. They're all prospects. Yeah. So we're seeing quite a lot of foreign guys come over. We're seeing some of the foreign guys more than the British guys. But when they all get to 9, 10, 11 and 0, we're going to have some great fights for the area title and English title. Nice little, uh, just faint, I think, with a jab and put right in there from Mackay. Yeah, some of the, like this, the natural matchups as well. Liverpool's got some ready-made rivalries. Manchester's got Hyde and Thompson. 
There's all sorts that can be yeah, done. Yeah, um, the central area title will probably be as hard to win as the British in about two years' time because yeah. there's that many prospects in the northwest. That was a good round for Mackay there. He actually had jabbed him at some points. Got caught with that one silly shot, but he soaked it up. I'd like to see him perhaps work the body a little bit yeah. more. I mean, such a long target. Perhaps bring his hands down a little bit. Very experienced cornerman in uh, Davidis's corner, Oscar Milkertus, knows his way around, former pro. Corners, 10 seconds. You're saying David has, look, has just sort of settled into a journeyman mode, hasn't he, John? You know, he's been over recently for Isaac Ramsey. Chamberlain. Fort Warren based a couple of times. I think we Gary had Sweeney. him against Shaq and Peters at the Aston Villa. I'm pretty sure we had him. Can't be too many six foot eight Lithuanians. <laughs> just seems quite content to box at range, doesn't he? Johnny always, I know the body's there, but he does seem to be getting the better of it at range, doesn't he, with the straight punches? Yeah, it just, you know, if these, when these guys get into a bigger level, they're going to be in longer fights, mm. and I like them to be seeing them doing the good stuff early on, you know, practicing the body shots, because yeah. when they're doing 10 and 12 rounders, they're going to need body shots. And when you've got someone this tall, it's the perfect practice. Although he's ungainly and orthodox, so... Sometimes it's about just getting the job done, but nice shot. When you're at this level, John, you know, Mike's doing well, he's, he's winning the rounds, but when you see something going quite comfortable and you're confident your guy can handle it, maybe in between rounds do you say, look, yeah, that's maybe this time stuff. work the double jab, get inside, or do you just say safety first, get the win tonight? It depends. If you look at a guy and he's winging a big shot in and he's got a few upset knockouts on his record, you might stay safety first, but there's a reason why they're called learning fights. Yeah. You can practice different stuff. He throws that wide right again, but Mike seems to be taking it well. But the trouble here is sometimes if you're kind of boxing a bit too comfortably, the opponent might get a little bit ambitious. You see how he's starting trying to win the right hand in? Yeah, left hook came then as well. Sometimes you've got to put them under manners and put them where you want them. If it's too comfortable, they might think, oh, I'm having a nice night here, I'm going to chance my arm. So I'd like to see him kind of put on the back foot and stuck on the ropes. See there, stepping again. Don't, yeah. that, that's it, don't, don't let him get comfortable. Let him make, know where he is. Make him wary, make him be concerned about what's coming back if he does open up. Yeah, because he was throwing, trying a few speculative right hands there and you don't want to give a six foot eight guy the confidence to start throwing his right hand. A little step to the right there, so we don't fight. see we're stepping onto his right hand there. A little step yep. to the right. Just moved into like just a little bit confused by. It. I think he just got a little, little bit thrown by that switch there, didn't he, Mackay? Just went into the left, back to the centre though. Who is someone this big though? He's one step and they're bloody there where they want to be. You make a lot of matches, John. What, what's it like some, for some of these debutants trying to find somebody who's acceptable, who fills all the criteria, and someone who the trainer will sign off on? What, oh, what's it like? It can be impossible, mate, because obviously the first fight and everyone wants it to be perfect, but they're going to have nerves. They're going to be, they're never going to be as hard a fight until they have the first total fight, so. You know, that's where these guys who are in week in, week out, they kind of tick all the boxes for people. But you've still got to get in there and do the job like here. This guy's still winging his right hand. Mark, Mike can't take his eye off the ball. He can't take it easy because this guy's nearly 14 stone and throwing his right hand with a bit of viciousness. So he's, if he does his job and keeps his wits about him, he'll be fine. But there's no such thing as a gimme, even when the guy's got a losing record, especially at this weight. In, in some ways, it's a good thing though, for, for the opponent to throw shots and, and leave some gaps. It, it, it gives the home guy Come the opportunity to work on things. When a, an opponent just comes and clams up and 
puts his defence up and just refuses to throw anything. Round three. Oh, it's very guys very, can become. Oh, you get stale. It's very hard. Yeah. He's good against the guy who wants to shut up shop. Sometimes you don't want to show power too early because while they're still fresh, they'll shut up shop. You want them to come at you. You want them to try a few things, but you don't want them to get too cheeky, especially if they've got a few knockouts on yeah. the record. You want them to know where they've got to be. Well, you know, Mike's boxing for a debut. He isn't rushing. He's picking his shots. He's boxing really nice against a big guy who's, you know, throwing shots back. I'm assuming you know, for someone who's had such a, a good amateur pedigree and probably boxed people with the perfect fundamentals, you know, the Eastern European guys, Mike Mackay, all the thought, probably wouldn't have resembled David Ass in any way whatsoever, no, would they? No, the first five or six fights he's going to have, he's going to resemble nothing compared to the amateur guys he's boxed at the, right le at the high level. But that's why they're called learning fights, that's why he's doing right now. But people expect high, these high-level amateurs to just blitz through these guys, don't they? But it's a, like, as you just said, it's an entirely different sport, you know, isn't it? It sounds crazy, but a lot of the tough journeymen prefer high-level am amateurs because they're easy to get through against. Because when you faint them, they do everything correctly. Yeah. They move away, they take the time. Whereas you get some guy who's not boxed at a high level, he just plows forward. So, you know, you, you can kind of get a rest because they do it correctly and they do it properly and they take the time. Whereas the guys who have just come straight from the unlicensed scene, they don't mind being hit on the chin to land their own. So a lot of the time, the, the clever journeymen enjoy the high-level amateurs because they, they know they can kind of get through a bit easier. Mike's settled in now. Just, just cut over to his right a little bit because he's, he's always going one way, Davidus. He's out jabbing him now, it's really he good. He is, isn't he? Yeah, he's really relaxed. He's boxed really well, to be honest. David has a, a little bit unwilling to really commit and plant his foot, isn't he? Maybe he's just felt a couple of those right hands that might landed early and he's a little bit wary about just he's, over committing on his jab, possibly. He's definitely felt it, but a lot of these guys as well, they're thinking about the job next week, yeah. so they'll wing a good shot in. If it don't work, they're happy to take a rest. They don't want to go full hammer because they might be boxing again in two weeks' time. Mm -hmm. He's going up to the end of the round now, another one in the bank there for Mike Mackay. Yeah, and he's tried some different stuff and he's had to keep his wits about him because Davidus has been looking for the shots. Well, is this the point now where John, where Mike sits on his stool? You can see David Ass has gone into his shell a little bit where you'd say, in this final round, Mike, let's try and get to a body up. Is this like the perfect scenario now for a learning fight? Yeah, what I would say here is, for the first 30, 40 seconds, lots of fine to keep it tight. Because a lot of guys on the road, they give you a go for the last minute of the last yeah. round. Because a lot of people switch off. And then once we got through that first minute, I'd say, right, turn it up now and let's give the fans some of the see what you're doing, show your skills. But for the first 30 seconds, first minute, just be a bit careful because a lot of these old clever journeymen know people kind of switch off when the last round starts and then they might try something on. But yeah, no, you know, he's boxed great. He's given his fans everything they wanted to see. He's even took Call a few bats. He's, he's boxed really well. Seconds out for the full and final round. Final round of uh, Mike McKay's debut. So far, so good. Still another seven fights here to come. Big Bill at the uh, BT Convention Centre here in Liverpool. Marcel Braithway, Lloyd the Viking Campbell, Tom Farrell, just some of the names coming. Battle between the debutants, Mike Gerrard and Gary Austin. I think that's could well, on paper, it's the one that jumps out at me tonight. Uh, Sean Cairns as well, and Na uh, Nathan Bennett also in action. See, first minute, yeah. he's trying it on, then he'll settle down as long as you don't give him too much.
That could well be the end of his burst there, couldn't it? Yeah. It was just winding down. John, you're, you're always busy with stuff. Uh, um, give her give what you've got, the lads you've got coming up and fights you've got scheduled, a bit of a plug. Got uh, Craig Cunningham in Germany, Germany tonight, fighting former world champ, Jack Kulkoy. Uh, Golden Jack. Yeah, yeah. So Craig's going over there to try and cause an upset. Just had some news on Sam Eggington. Uh, that should be announced Monday. He'll be making his comeback in April. <laughs> Um, and then we've got all our lads on. We've got two home shows at Aston Villa in May. So we're getting all our local Birmingham lads on there. So busy coming up, busy. Like a tough fight for Craig, wasn't it, against um, the South African guy's name escapes me on the uh, UK yeah, versus Africa you know show. He's a I'll, talented guy. Yeah, I'll be honest as well. Craig has had that many pull-outs. He actually says to me on the night, he says, you know what? He says, I honestly thought the guy was going to pull out the last few days. He says, I'm not switched on. And he kind of showed that, but he literally had five title fights to pull out on him, and he, he kind of made him a bit stale, so that's why when this one come up, he's like, great, I can show what I'm about now, you know what I mean? Oh, we are. He's letting it go. <laughs> Keep your wits about your mic, nothing silly. the little touch to the body there, that's what I meant earlier. Yeah. These tall guys, a little touch downstairs and you get success off it. That's that's why they're called learning fights and he's, he's boxed really well, boxed calm. He's took a few shots, took them no problem. Practice that, what he's doing. That can be just as crucial as getting a, a quick knockout, can't it, in, in this oh, yeah, stage? Yeah. Just that added confidence that you know you can take a shot as well. The belt, save the knockouts when you've got total fights and stuff like that. Get the rounds under the belt. It looks like he's hurt his shoulder though. I notice he's got a scar on the left shoulder. Oh, that's not nothing to worry about in the future. Yeah, on the front of his left shoulder. Yeah, but you look at how he's rolling his right shoulder. Usually if you've got a bad shoulder, it's both. So I hope that's nothing to see how he's rolling it. I hope he hasn't hurt it. Didn't, be, didn't look too apparent, did it? No, in, it was just in, right at the end. He started rolling it. Perhaps he just, you know, he might have... Maybe a misclincher is a little bit of... So trouble with someone this tall. You always end up, you, you're lifting yourself all the time. You can end up pulling joints out when you're in the clinches. Uh, the official score from Paul Booth, but I don't think you have to have missed it, Meg, to find out who's won this. No, I think he's won every round comfortably there. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause, please, for both of our professional boxers in the ring. Two good fights coming up. Well, the cruiserweight contest does go the distance. After four rounds of boxing, we ask Steve Gray to decide the bout. Steve Gray scores this one, 40 points to 36 points, in favour of our winner from Warrington, Cheshire. It's a debut victory for Mike Mackay. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a nice show of boxing respect as well, please, for our runner up there from Lithuania, Imantas Davidadis. So once again, then, he leaves the ring victorious. It's a debut victory for Warrington's Mike McCoy. 